So here we are, the Trotter. This is the Magwheel Max. It's the T3, it's a 1500 watt, most up to date Trotter Magwheel. Go dummy, go beast on them. I go beast. Go deep, I OD on them. Apply pressure, put heat on them. Put that size up, zero degrees on them. 500 degrees. Go dummy, go beast on them. I go beast. Go deep, I OD on them. Apply pressure, put heat on them. Put that size up, zero degrees on them. 500 degrees. Go down, levitate. Going up, elevate. Watch me demonstrate, on time, never late I grind, celebrate, no pump fake, hesitate I been scoring every day, champagne Perrier Since 9-3, been in the box, now I'm stepping up to home Like straight out the sand lot, now I'm plotting on the globe I work hard, I show love, that karma steady growing Got this far, I go hard, let God take control I was starving, skinny, now my weight up Got no energy for haters, see you trying, see you later See you later I'm shooting for the stars, need no laser beam Blowing like the greatest, but it's one who's always greater Yo. Go dummy, go beast so about a year and a half ago, I started talking with Joe from Innovative Electronics. Uh, he is the US importer of the Trotter and the main retail outlet for purchasing a Trotter Magwheel in the United States. And I was really excited to get my hands on one of these. We've been talking back and forth and Joe is really the driving force behind getting these newer updates happening in these boards, which I think is great. So in the box, you get obviously the board itself, you get a charger. You also get different uh, foot pad replacement options that are kind of a silicone material that go on right here on the foot pad itself. Uh, and they come in different colors. You can choose the colors also. I think they have like red, yellow, green, blue, uh, and black. I went with all black on the board. And of course the manual comes in the box as well. So the specs on paper are pretty good. It'll go 22 miles per hour. It'll do about a 17 or 18 mile range, depending on your riding style, of course. And like I said, it has 1500 watts of power. So it should be a pretty torquey motor. The tire itself is a 12 inch tire also. So it's pretty big. I really like the profile of the tire. It's very round. It helps it to give it a real carvey feel to it. Uh, you can almost like pirouette in like one spot with this board. Found that pretty interesting. The board is built really, really well. Uh, all the rails, everything feels pretty solid. Everything's built like a tank kind of, it's all metal. Even the bottom plates and stuff are metal. The only bits that you find are plastic or on the top near the foot pads and those areas. The battery cover on the bottom of the board is actually a aluminum plastic composite apparently. It's supposed to be super strong, it's lighter weight and is non-conductive. Now I have to say, I was super excited to get this board, like really pumped. And the main reason is I don't like Future Motion. If you don't know who Future Motion is, Future Motion is the company that makes the one wheel. And the product is amazing, the one wheel is great. The company, many people in the community would agree, it's not a great company. They do all sorts of weird things, they lock people out of modifying their boards or working on their boards. You don't have the right to repair the board if you purchase a one wheel, for instance. Uh, you can't even buy parts if you wanted to. Um, you can't diagnose any issues. They even took away over time things like being able to see individual cells in the app of, do you have a bad cell inside your battery? Uh, they reversed polarity on connections inside so that if you were modding your board, it would short out the whole board. So they made the plus the negative and the negative the plus, but didn't change the signs. This is a few bo boards ago back on the one wheel plus, but still it's indicative of a company that wants to keep control over every aspect of it, including the repairability of your board. With the Trotter, you don't have that issue. And that was a big selling point to me. I think it's pretty cool that I can take this whole thing apart with screwdrivers, regular stuff. I don't have to go buy security Torx bits like you do with a one wheel uh, to take it apart. So you can open it up, you can put a different battery in, you can swap the battery with, uh, with a Phillips head screwdriver at, during your ride if you want to. I think that stuff's pretty cool. It gives you the ability to open it up, put in more silicone in different spots if you wanted to, to try to like waterproof your boards more. All these things that I think as a user are great. You can also purchase parts directly from Trotter or from Joe through Innovative Electronics as a, a distributor that you can get the parts. So if something fails on the board, you can repair it and you can just fix it. With one wheel, you gotta send it back. So I like that the repairability that factor definitely is there on this board. So even though the board is made overseas, anytime you need to do any repairs or anything like that under warranty, it'll all be handled by Innovative Electronics, which is here in the United States. The foot pads. This one's an interesting one. At first I looked at the foot pad and I was like, there's no way that thing is gonna grip my foot at all. And I would say it gets you about 85% 
maybe of the grip, 90% of the grip of like grip tape, maybe 85%, I don't know, of grip tape. But it is really comfortable if you're like barefoot. So I think like you look at a lot of the guys on other boards out there and they put like uh, the protraction pads or I think they're called protraction pads, but it's like a foam pad that goes onto it. And it's supposed to make it more comfortable, especially barefoot. You don't have to do any of those switches here. Um, but I think for me, it would be cool if they did come out with an option that like came with some sort of grip tape. Joe also told me that if you cut some strips of grip tape and just add them in this area on the board, you'll get a lot extra grip. I think that makes a ton of sense and I'm definitely gonna be cutting some strips of grip tape and adding in there. It'll cost me like $2 to do it. You could put grip tape on this too and just tape right over it. So that's probably what I'll end up doing is putting grip tape on it because I just like the feel of it. But the strange thing about the foot pads isn't the fact that it's made of like the silicone material. It's the fact of how they actually put the sensors in the board. So there's a sensor in the front and there's a sensor in the rear and when you touch both, the board activates and levels itself. So if the board starts like this, it will then, right when you activate it, it's gonna turn on and it's gonna go and it's gonna level out. It took me a couple minutes to learn it of how to actually mount the board, but after about two minutes, I could just get on, stand still, right away if I wanted to. No big deal. So mounting the board, I thought that was gonna be the big difficult thing with this, and it, it took a couple minutes and was a little scary at first, but it's really not bad. You just gotta kinda commit to it and make sure your weight is directly over the wheel. However, because there's a sensor in the front and the back, when you come to a stop and you'd like to actually get off of the board, it's not very easy to disengage the motor. You have to either crawl your foot like off the front foot pad so that you're not actually hitting it and let it roll off, or you can tip the board like sideways, like roll it forward off your toes and you just kind of roll it forward and as soon as it gets to a 45, the board will disengage and turn off and fall over, no big deal. Uh, or you can just jump off, or you can learn like the slam stop like you do, or you you're going forward, you take your foot off real quick and you slam it down and the tail drops. So you do have a few options of like how you actually are going to disengage the board. None of them are that like clean. I think learning how to do the quick stop where you actually just slide your front foot off when you come up to it like, like that, that's the right way to probably learn how to controllably stop this board and get off of it. So those are the specs and kind of the basic functions of the board, but how does it ride? That's the big question. How does this ride? It rides okay. I wanted to love this board. I really, really did. I wanted to get on it and be like, this is it, this is amazing, I love it. I didn't get that feeling. And I will say, part of it might be the fact that I just don't have that much time on it. Uh, on the street, I can ride it pretty well. On the off-road, I can't ride it very well. I find that when I hit undulations, it makes, it's difficult. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm coming to this as a one wheeler or as an e-skater or as someone that's ridden a lot of other devices and I'm expecting it to behave a certain way. I'll tell you the key to this right now. It behaves like an EUC. So the difference between an EUC and how a future motion one wheel works is an EUC, as soon as you turn it on, it actually stabilizes and now that platform is completely balanced and stable and you take your one foot off the ground, put it onto the second pedal and you ride away on a, on a unicycle. On the one wheels, you put your foot on, you put your front foot on and you bring the board to level so it's not on, it's not on. As soon as it comes to level, it, a gyroscope recognizes that the board is level and it turns on and you're able to ride away. With the trotter, it works like the EUC, but the power button, like the, to make it actually balance, isn't the button, but it's the, it's the foot button, basically. So you turn, you give the board power, but then it activates and balances as soon as you put your front foot on and you connect those two switches. That's inherently different than anything else I've really ridden that much of. And EUC is, like I said, the most similar because it's, it's kind of always on. You can think of when you, when you see someone riding EUC over like a bump, the EUC stays completely level and rolls like this over it. Whereas with like a one wheel, it dips and then it goes up and then it dips and then it goes up as it goes over like whoops. So when I was off road and I hit a whoop, I was expecting this board to act like other boards and actually kind of like dip down and ride when in reality you kind of, the board wants to stay completely level as it's going across undulations. I gave it a little too much, taxed it, and the board instantly tried to correct and started doing like a rocking horse motion that I wasn't able to recover from, and it pitched me. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. 
Luckily, of course, I wear my gear, so I'm fine, but it is something to note that you need to ride this thing more like, a, I think, like an EUC than like a one wheel or anything else. It's just a different beast. So I think with a few more hours of practice with it, I'll probably get to the point where I can ride this pretty well. I think this is a more challenging vehicle to learn how to ride than, than some of the other things out there. Like an e-skate, I think is really, really easy, especially if you've skateboarded before. Um, any, any type of balancing, whether it be an EUC, a one wheel, or a trotter, um, is a little bit more tricky to learn for, for a lot of people. Pair that with the fact that I have a lot of experience with a, a different kind of board, a one wheel, and then I get on this and they react very differently. And it makes sense that basically user error and I pitched myself. So practice will make perfect. So where does that leave us? Uh, Joe from Innovative Electronics is working with uh, Trotter and they're actually coming out with an app soon that you're gonna be able to control some of the functionality of how the board reacts uh, within the app. So I'm very excited about that. I like, like I said, the repairability. I like the ability to get parts. I like the fact that the performance could actually be even more than, than the competitor, the one wheel. Um, I like the fact that the company is constantly improving and they brought out more models and we have somebody in the US here that's really pushing it and trying to get this out there. You know, Future Motion really needs competition, so I am happy to see anyone come to market with something that is competing with them. I really like the tire shape, I like the tire size too. I actually like the look of like the rim. I think it looks cool that it's like a, a mag wheel on one side. I like a lot of things to this. I just see that the con for me is the fact that there's no gyroscope that engages the motor once it goes level and that it just turns on as soon as you start to ride the board. For a lot of people out there, they're fine with it and absolutely love it. There's a lot of videos of guys ripping around on these things, dropping off curbs, doing big drops, and I've even seen that somebody throw one of these off a roof just to see how durable it was, and it was fine. If you guys want to see much better riders, head over to Joe's page. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can just like click over. And he's got a ton of videos on trails, on street, where you can see what the boards can really do. So there are for sure a lot of pros to the board, but the cons for me, I can't get over the fact of that leveling or maybe it's just going to take me a long time to get used to it. I, I mean, jumping between the devices is always a hard thing to do. Like if I just jumped on an EUC right now, I'd have a harder time riding it than I did when I used to own one. So who's this board for? I think this board is for someone that wants to try something different. Um, it's definitely a different ride. It's maybe if you're really into EUCs, you would get on this and be like, this thing works exactly like my mind thinks it should. But if you're coming from one wheel, it's going to take a minute for sure, it's gonna take more than a minute to get used to this because it is a totally different beast uh, than a one wheel is. If you're a tinkerer, if you like to take things apart and you like to change things and modify things and do all that, this is definitely a better option because you can fully get in there, do whatever you want with it. I'm really hoping that with more practice with the board, I'll be more accustomed with how it works and possibly new software updates could really just bring new life to this board. Like I said, there's tons of people out there that are riding these things really, really well. Maybe I just suck. So thank you to Innovative Electronics uh, for sending me the trotter to review. I am super thankful for you sending it. Uh, this has been my very honest, uh, very candid, just keeping it real review with you guys about the trotter. It's close, we're close. We're close to a full on competitor. It needs just a little bit of refinement. If we can get a good app coming out with some good ability to change some of the riding modes and the software and stuff, I think this could do it. At the moment, it's so close. It really, really is. So I'll leave it at that. And if you guys had any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them and I'll see you guys next time. Go beast, oh no, I go beast, go deep, I OG, oh no.